Well, I'm I'm happy. I, I like C.H. Robinson. I, we work a lot with C.H. Robinson. I don't work with TQL. Well, they don't work with us, I should say. <laughs> So look, I'm reading an article right now. Let's talk about this. Bathroom access allowed for commercial truck drivers in Washington state. Drivers can use facilities at locations where they do business with shippers. With shippers, Truck drivers in Washington state will be allowed to use an existing bathroom facility located either on the premises of the shipper or the receiver under a bill signed into the law earlier this month. Why does this even need to have like need to be a law? I feel like this should be a normal thing, you know. You know that's actually kind of crazy how I started my uh my uh Instagram because I would record this stuff and I would be like kind of not roasting, but like I would be like, "Yo, this is a facility. I feel like I'm in jail." Cuz sometimes you walk into some of these facilities and they're like all gated in, you know, and you can't yeah. use the bathroom, you can't do nothing. And then they get mad when a driver goes pisses on their wall, you know. So well, let's just say that you, when you were a driver back in the day and you really had to go to the bathroom, you weren't able to, what would you do? Well, you just literally have to go find like a tree or something. And if you got to pee, you just pee on a tree or pee on mm. their building, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, so the worst part is like some of them don't even have any bathrooms at all. Some of them, they'll put this like porter potty, you know, like one porter potty across the whole, whole freaking, um, uh, building or, uh what should we call it? a warehouse, you know, and then you have to literally walk around and find it. But yeah, dude, it's, that's, that's kind of messed up. I feel like there's like so a business there to like install like really nice porta potties next to warehouses and just have like, you know, I don't know, you pick a dollar to entry and enter and it's like super nice and clean, but maybe, maybe an idea. Charge drivers. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe charge the facility that has that down there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Sure. If they're willing to pay, but it's so like, why do you think that we're like warehouses and facilities don't let drivers uh, like use the restrooms? I don't know. I feel like some drivers are nasty too. So, you know, I think that has something to do with it, but then again, it's like, what are you supposed to do? You're, you don't have a bathroom in your truck, you know? So, yeah. But there is a lot of that too. But speaking of the porter potties, I actually went to a business uh, school before, like in uh, Dallas, like two years ago. And this guy had a whole legit business of uh, porter potties. Like he would literally bring porter potties to facilities that needed okay. them. You know, yeah, yeah. run this whole business. It was actually, I mean, it's a it's a dirty job, but yeah, hey, whatever makes money, I guess. There's you know? money to be made in dirty jobs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, so you, you had the. First, the Washington law now that uh, applies that you need to allow drivers to use the restroom. Is that what it is? The article yeah. they read it? Okay. Yeah. So House Bill 1457, after it passed both the House and the Senate during the recent concluded 2023 session of state of legis legislature, legislation. So this, this is only in the state of Washington? Yeah. Okay. Got it. Well. Bathrooms must be look. Bathrooms must be located in an area where providing access would create an obvious health or safety risk to the motor carrier, the shipper, receiver, or employees, according to language in the law. The State Department of Health can issue a warning letter for first violation of the new law, and a fine up to three hundred dollars. Uh, they're they're just gonna be paying these fines and not put any bathrooms in. I feel like. I mean, maybe. I, I mean, small shippers will for sure have them. Uh, but yeah and you go to no and you go to some of these small shippers and receivers they're mad chill you know they don't care they literally let you and they'll still invite you for a cup of coffee or something you know yeah. but some of these big facilities that's where it's like so so stupid it could also be due to safety reasons because like they, they might if anything were to happen to that driver on premises like they get sued so like i think yeah. like the larger companies probably take that into like uh take that into uh consideration when they make up like these these rules and stuff exactly. but but yeah, so that's one uh, interesting bit of information. And then I know that we want to talk about the towing stuff that, that happened. Uh, Bob, can you like take us back? I think it was a few weeks ago when you started posting uh, or ro roasting a t towing company in North Carolina. How how did that occur and what, what ended up happening? Dude, so basically my friend shows up um, to Charlotte 
I tell him that there's a truck stop nearby, literally by our office. We actually went to that one. Remember, we recorded a video there where I was like, remember, we, I went to get the uh, Red Bull there? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, I so I always see trucks parked there. They have truck parking there. It's like, I think it's like 10 spots, maybe seven spots like that are dedicated to trucks, maybe even less. Um, but then I guess, so they have those parking, he parked in that parking spot. He didn't see the sign that it said you have to pay for parking for overnight. So I guess you don't have to pay during the day, but overnight, if you're sure. leaving the truck or you're staying, you got to pay, I think it's like 12 or $15. So he didn't see that sign. Uh, he parks, I come pick him up. Why he didn't see that sign is actually, believe it or not, it's such a small, small, uh, truck stop, you know, that. People are always parking on the side. Like if you ever go there, there's people always parking on the side and yeah. kind of blocking the entrance and blocking certain ways. So there was a truck that was, I think, parked right where the sign was. So you couldn't even see the sign, you know? So um, that's why why he didn't see it. And then like as soon as he parked, I, I pulled up and I picked him up and uh, took him to my house. So he was crashing at my house. And then the next morning he was still at my house. I go to work. And then I drive by that place. And I'm like, where's my friend's truck? I didn't see it, you know? And I'm like, I called and the funny part is we were joking about the other night, like, oh, your truck is probably like getting towed or something. Like we kind of just made like a joke of it, you know? Sure. And then um, I literally, I call him the next day. I'm like, dude, your truck is actually not here. dude." And he's like, no, stop messing with me. And I'm like, no, it's actually not here. Like I'm, I'm legit, you know? So then I, I sent him the picture of the sign that was there. And then uh, it said like, like, you know, your it will be towed by Ingram's towing. And then uh, there was a, it said at the low, low bottom with like kind of smaller letters, it said, semi trucks or uh, tractor trailers with semi trailers is like $2,000 or up. And I'm like, Oh snap, $2,000. That's a lot of money. You know, I'm like thinking, even if it's two grand, I'm like, that's a lot, you know? So he calls him cause I didn't call. He calls him. And then, um, uh, my friend Mark car, uh, calls the, calls the guy. And then, uh, I call Mark back and I'm like, so what did they tell you? And he's like, it's six grand. I'm like, dude, there's no way it's $6,000. You know, there's, there's just no way. And then, um, it was like, Three thousand for the truck and three thousand dollars for the trailer. You know, so wow. I I leave the office right away because I'm like I feel so bad, you know. And um, I leave the office. I go there. I'm like trying to talk to these guys, try to be reasonable with them. I'm like, dude, it, literally not even twelve hours have passed. We're trying to get our truck back, and you're trying to charge, you know, six thousand dollars for it was like sixteen miles from this side to the other side of like uh across the Charlotte, you know. And I was like, this is just ridiculous. And we tried, dude, we literally spent hours just trying to talk to them and reason with them, you know, just like be like, yo, come on, help us out. We understand everything, but like, help us out, you know, do do this. And and the guy just didn't care. They were playing this stupid game where it's like the owner was saying, you got to call this guy, uh, this guy, Todd, I believe. And then you call Todd and Todd is just working for the owner. And the owner was actually the guy that I recorded, you know, William. Okay. So I didn't even know, but they were playing this like good, good cop, bad cop type of thing. You know, it's like, oh, you got to deal with him. And then you call him, you're trying to explain your situation. He's like, I'll see what I can do. And then that guy shows up and he's like, no, it's six grand cash, you know? And we're like, where the heck we're going to get six grand cash, you know? Oh, borrow it from somebody. And if you don't, then tomorrow it's going to be storage fees and all this, you know? Wow. So it was just, it was so stupid. No credit cards. And yeah, they were just, they were just being mm. stupid about it. So. So you ended up, I know you started posting on Instagram, like you were pretty aggressive with it. Um, and I actually wasn't sure exactly like why, why that, you know, you were so like against them. But now, like when I understand the whole story, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Just to think about that they would charge six grand, uh, for 16 miles over one night. And it wasn't like the truck was broken down in like the middle of nowhere. And there was like some yeah. adverse weather. Uh, there was really no reason for it, but so now tell us Bob. So you ended up like posting like, the shit out of them on social media yeah. and so what, what occurred afterwards it, yeah so instead of a uh, towing they call it impound you know that they impound the truck but dude they're taking advantage of this north carolina law where they can kind of charge whatever they want you know so they're you know they're trying to make it this excuse like our equipment costs this this much it doesn't matter you know a truck costs this this much it doesn't give me the right to go and charge these obnoxious prices right there's a supply and demand for it but with this one with impound they sign these stupid contracts with um with like these small truck stops or or walmart for example you know and then once they impound it you got no choice but to pay you know you you don't have the choice like oh let's negotiate or let's you know i won't I'll, like because when you call a towing company and you need your truck towed you know you could be like well they tell you three grand and you're like well i'm gonna find somebody else so you call around and, and try to find somebody else and if nobody's busy they'll still do it for three grand you know or they'll do it for fifteen hundred dollars but with this 
They just impound it and that's it. You have to pay in order to get it back. And I know you're saying like that I was kind of aggressive in that video, you know, and believe me, I kept my cool for so long. You know, I I was yeah. like so nice with them. I didn't, I was recording stuff, but not like to his face. I was just recording for my, my uh, purpose. You know, like yeah. I have a lot more videos, everything that led up to that, like how we were kind of begging him to like, you know, to, to just drop it down by at least a little bit. Like, how do you charge six thousand dollars for sixteen miles? You know, in, in in less than twelve hours, it didn't it didn't make any sense. So, so then after that, after I didn't want to, I didn't want to be even like mean in the beginning or nothing, or I didn't even want to record him because I know some of these companies will like just be stupid and they'll just be like, okay, well now it's like ten grand because I've talked to some of my friends and they'll just you know they'll they'll even tell you it's it's a higher price now to get your truck back. So at first I was like nice and everything, I didn't record him. But then when there was no choice but to pay because it was already like four or five o'clock and they were closing and they were basically saying like, look, if you don't pay, then you got to come back tomorrow and then tomorrow it's going to be even more money. You know, so they were like charging you storage fees for it. So we ended up we ended up like paying three grand cash and then three grand. We just zellied it to him. Um, so, so you, we, we you ended up paying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. We had to pay. We so had like, to pay to get it out. OK, so did you start posting against them? After you paid or be, before of course, you paid? Of course. That's why I started recording okay. him. That's why I became oh, okay. more of like aggressive because I was just pissed at that point. And then I was like, I have nothing to lose at this point. You know, we got the truck already out of their yard. Dude, yeah. I called the cop and the cop was like, honestly, it's going to be cheaper for you to jump in the truck and try to pull out. And then even if you get charges, it'll be cheaper than six grand, you know, and plus they won't really go after you and charge you. He's like, I'm not telling you to do it, but that's literally what the cop told me. And he's like, they just have these stupid laws. He's like, what you can do is actually go to court and like, uh, like go to civil, civil court, civil you know, court, yeah, yeah. yeah, try to file it through that, you know, but he's like, cops can't really do nothing. Like they don't, sure. it's not like a, it's not a fight or something that's like done illegal, you know? So you have to go through civil court in order okay. to do that. But he's like, literally, I'm like, what would happen? You know, I was like, I, he was a super, super chill cop. He like learned about this stuff. He he knows this is going on in Charlotte, you know, and he yeah. like learned about it. Like it's, it's just a, they had to actually deal with the Walmart because do they had people. And it's funny because a guy actually messaged me yesterday that he got a tow bill for $8,000. They literally have these towing tow companies sitting at Walmart watching for trucks to pull in, go to the bathroom at Walmart and they will literally put a lock on their, um, on their tire. And it's like two grand or three, three grand to take that lock off and if you don't take it off so what happened to this guy yesterday that actually messaged me i'll post it actually today probably on my instagram basically they put a lock on his tire he got out of the truck they called the cops i think he went inside or something they actually towed his truck so his bill went from three thousand dollars to eight thousand dollars yikes yeah i can't believe it this is legal that's my whole point. And then, you know, I went on a live or whatever. And some people are like, oh, he can charge. Dude, no, that's, 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 you don't do that in life. I feel like, I don't know. That's way not too. In the, not in the U.S. You know, I feel like there should be like laws protecting like uh, people from, from, you know, gouging and stuff like that. But so when you ended up like, you know, basically reporting him on Instagram, uh, what ended up like following what, what happened with all that? So I posted a video, you know, I posted a video and then like. I, I told him I recorded the video, you know, and I'm like, you know, you're going to go, I'm going to post you up. And he's like, and he's like, can you hear me? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to post the video, you know, and you're going to go viral. And he's like, oh, I don't care about social media. I don't care anything about that. You know, I'm like, you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> you sure about that? You know, so. <laughs> Um, I posted it up and I, I could see when I posted it, the video was already like picking up. It was like half an hour where it was like already picking up momentum, you know, and people were just pissed and commenting mm -hmm. and, and I'm yeah. guessing hitting this guy up. So I hit him up and I actually posted that other video too. And I'm like, listen, you know, I'm about to just post it. Can I kind of expose you what you're doing? You know, that, that this is going on, you know, and, uh, I actually still called Todd because I didn't know that William was the the actual owner, you know, and, and Todd is like, it's already kind of too late, but let me see what I can do, you know, and I'm like, it's not too late. It's only going to get worse, you know? Yeah. So, um, so, cause I was like trying to get some, some of the money back for, for my friend, you know, and then, um, and then he never called me back. So I, then I called him again and that's when that lady picked up William's wife or whoever she is or the, his girlfriend. And then she started like, you know, saying like, oh, we're going to counter sue you all this stuff. And I'm like, you know, bring, bring it on if that's what you want to do. And then, so once I left the video on, it just kept getting more and more viral. 
and then um and then uh basically it got so so viral that uh the guy like uh Alex reached out to me from Good Energy. You know, he tried to kind of like talk to that guy and that guy was actually going to send us like some money back and to kind of like, you know, learn from his mistakes. But then I think yeah. when he went on the live, he like changed his mind or something. Well, basically he told us he'll send us three grand back. And then we told him we were like thinking about it and we're like, so we already, I started the GoFundMe. So we kind of raised, raised up. I think it was already more than three grand at that point. So I was okay. like, it doesn't make any sense to take, three grand back and then take our people's money you know so i was like no let, let, let's let have well my friend was like let's have him pay the six grand back and then send the money back to the people right or just yeah. donate it to like you know uh some some kind of trucker and trafficking or something so, some kind of whatever donation that we were gonna make sure and that's what i told to to ali's good energy you know and they're like oh he wants all his money back my point was not even just to get all my money back. My point was like, listen, you kind of need to learn not to do this. And plus people need to know about this. Cause I feel like if I, oh, so he, he was going to send three grand back if I took the video down, you know? And I'm, I was like, okay, yeah, I'll take the three grand back and then I'll take the video down. But then, um, you know, the, all my followers, I feel like that would be, there would be no point. Cause they just raised three grand for my friend. And then I would just take a video down. It, like, it doesn't even make any sense, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why I was like, if you send us all the money back, then I'll take the video down. And then that's where I think he flipped on, uh, on, um, when he went live with a uh, good energy and he was like, Oh, I'm not going to send any money back. This is what it is. This is what I'm charging, you know, and this is what it, I'm like, okay, that's how you want to, you know, if that's how you want to go in life, then. So Alex good energy reached out to you and he tried to mediate between yeah. both. Like why, why did Alex good energy reach out to you? Like, cause did he know that guy or. No, no. So apparently that video was shared to him like a lot, you know, and all these people that like shared this video, everybody was getting even like a, a mother trucker reposted that video because everybody oh, was wow. sharing that video. That video wow. was going like super, super viral, you know. Okay. And, um, so Alex looked it up and I think that guy was following Alex, uh, the towing guy, you know, he was following okay. Alex because okay. Alex got a big following too. So he reached out to him and then Alex is like, yeah, I talked to him. He's a humbled man. He learned from his mistakes, all this stuff, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad maybe something positive came out of this, you know. And then um, I guess when he got on the live and um, he was like, yeah, I don't think, you know, I don't think I should give all the money back, blah, blah, blah. You know, I should. This is my prices. This is what I charge. I'm like, I mean, if you want to keep scamming people, then then, you know, I hope, so, I hope that works for you. At the end of the day, you didn't take the video down and you you didn't get any money back, right? No. Yep. Oh wow. The and only you, money, the only yeah. money we got was that what we raised from our followers. And how much did you four, raise? Uh, right now, it's at four thousand two hundred, I believe. Oh wow, that's a lot. And how much does GoFund take from that? Does it, do they take a percentage, or is that a? They do. It's like it's a very small percent. It's like one point five percent or something like that. So it's it's going it. to be like two hundred dollars that gets taken out of that. So it'll still be like four thousand dollars, basically. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's an interesting story. Uh, has, yeah. Has he reached out to you recently to try to get that video down or is it just kind of no no over with he has i mean his his uh i so the funny part is like where i where i kind of live his business i actually drive by his tow yard all the time and now it's shut i don't see i don't see him towing stuff in there anymore you know oh really so, yeah but also i think i'm not i'm not trying to exaggerate or whatever but i think a lot of my followers actually reported him to like you know, um, but better business bureau and all these like IRSs and all this stuff. Cause first of all, if you're charging cash, you know, they're there, that's a big red flag. Yeah. I feel like, you know, oh, definitely. if you're not, if you're not giving the opportunity to pay with a credit card or something like that. Yeah. And then, um, also a lot of my followers digged into it and they saw that like their, their company's out of service. They can't even tow stuff, you know? Wow. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. So that's the crazy part is like if you look at if you look at Ingram's um on FMCSA, it says out of service, so they can't even operate. That's pretty fascinating. Yeah. So that's that's where um and then actually um Alex from Overdrive reached out to me too. I think they're gonna write an article about this. I don't know if they still will, but he was like trying to get all the facts straight, you know, because they're obviously like a publisher type of thing. So yep, yep, that's yeah. right. Wow. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, but it's it's pretty crazy. I, I honestly, I'm like just shocked how many. I mean, I know that there's like bad people in this world, you know, that will take advantage of of people. But like, this is just to a pretty big extreme, you know.
Because I yeah. feel like that is taking advantage of truck drivers, you know. And I, I, I understand that these tone companies, they think like, oh, you know, if, if, if it's a semi truck, then a big company owns it and they have the money to pay for it. You know, that, that's their I think that's their thought well, is like, yeah, usually, usually they're at least on to somebody or usually they're just company drivers and then the company will pay for it, you know. And I, I think for another uh, reason is because like at the end of the day, like even if let's say you're not a big company, you're an owner operator, or you're a small train company, you need that truck to make money. You're going to have to pay exactly. for that. You're, it's not like you're going to leave it. You're, like you're going to eventually, if, if you leave it there for more than a couple of weeks, you're going to be losing more than that, that amount. So like, well, after 10 days, they basically file a thing, a lien on your title and they just uh, take the truck. Yeah. That's insane. That's literally what he told us. I have a video recorded. The crazy part is, dude, they got into my friend's truck. So they have universal keys. Listen to this. They have universal keys where he literally says it on the video. He's like, I can get into any truck in Charlotte or, you know, in, in North Carolina. So they yeah. have these universal keys. They get in. They start up the truck. They unhook the trailer. They drove the truck for like, I think it was like half a mile, unhooked it. And then I guess they somehow towed it up. I actually wanted to get the video from... um from the truck stop, but we never got the video because I, I wanted to see how they operated and did that because on the GPS. So my friend has a GPS. It showed that the truck was driven. You know, that's where we were like, what mm -hmm. the heck? So they drove his truck illegally. They got into his truck illegally. Wow. Yeah. That's it's, terrible. Dude, it's, it's, such a, it's a such a sketchy, I don't know, sketchy people and sketchy business, you know, and I don't yeah. know. So I like, don't this know. is, and I thought, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. And I told him, I'm like, how do you, how do you sleep at night? You know, I actually told him that. How do you how do you sleep at night? Because I was just like trying to talk to him even you know before mm -hmm. I started recording him, and he's like, I don't sleep at night. I tow your equipment. I'm like, okay, you know, what a dick. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I know that there's a lot of towing companies around the U S. That, that charge obscene prices, but since we're sticking on Charlotte, I know that you also talked. Uh, you mentioned this week that one of your friend's trucks got stolen in Charlotte. So is Charlotte just like, uh, like, is there a lot of crime and like a lot of shadiness in Charlotte? I wouldn't say that there's a lot of crime or shadiness, but it seems like with this, with the towing and I mean, I think every city has right certain things and mm -hmm. yeah. So it's my friends, Definitely. basically they have a company and then some two guys showed up and just stole the truck, took it for a joy ride. They were driving around Charlotte area, like literally going to gas stations and stuff, just chilling on it apparently. And then um, I think the drivers, so my friend's driver shows up because they have, they have a decent amount of trucks. He shows up and the truck is not there, you know? And yeah. then they, they look at the GPS and they see that, that the truck has been driven around. So then they see where the truck is parked. They go over there. The truck was like abandoned or like parked by this other warehouse. They pick it up, but then the truck is kind of destroyed. Like they destroyed the truck on the outside and then they, they destroyed the truck in the inside too. You yeah. know, so they're trying to find out who who these people are because i mean sometimes you know charlotte's big but it's not that big sometimes somebody could be hiring these people you know or our friends could be, hire these people so at least if somebody has a name you could reach out and you know give it to the cops that that way cops can have a lead and go on from that okay. but there is a decent amount of crime like i know the pilot here in charlotte um right off of i-85 i think last year there was actually a, a guy a truck driver that got shot he was okay. like walking the truck and got shot and actually died. So yeah, I saw the craziest video. It was like from this week of uh, I'm not sure if you saw it. It was it was in Charlotte. It was it was a public bus, and um, a guy was telling the driver to stop, uh, like immediately so he could get off. And the driver's like, "There's I'm not stopping until the next uh, like bus stop." And the guy literally takes out a gun and he's like, "Stop right now, or I'm also gonna shoot you." And the driver of the bus, instead of actually pulling over and letting the guy out, pulled out his gun and started shooting back at him. And it was oh, wow. like, this video is insane. Because he just, he literally just starts shooting back at him while he's driving. The, the the bus, like, goes off the road. He stops the bus and just starts shooting at him. And this guy just runs out of the bus. And, like... Oh, dang. And, like... This was the, in Charlotte? This was in Charlotte this week. It, like, happened two days ago, oh. I think. Oh, and wow. I and the that. guy in charge of, like, the whole bus, uh, public bus uh, operation in Charlotte was, like, yeah, like, the driver should have stopped, like, instead of, like, shoot back. Like, it made no sense, you know? It's, like, yeah. dude, just stop the, like, stop, the, stop the bus, let the guy out, and, like, 
But instead, the guy's like, no, I'm not going to hand it. I'm not going to take it. Like, so you said, yeah, shooting. he was like, I had enough of this, you know, <laughs> let me show you who the boss is. Yeah. yeah. No, but oh. I don't know. And then there was another actually in Charlotte. There was a, a huge building that burned down two weeks ago. I don't know if it was like somebody burned it down or not, but yeah. it was like up in flames. It was insane. Okay. So, yeah. Interesting. But I think like back to like the towing stuff, I feel like, um, why it kind of the video went on viral and stuff like that because this is going on not just in charlotte but it's going on in a lot of different states too you know okay. and i feel like drivers and companies are getting kind of screwed left and right you know yeah. so i feel like that's why there was such a huge huge community well, that, like stepped in and was like yo this is this is insane you know? you know many times when like a towing company tows a truck like it's typically because you know something's wrong with the truck and then like insurance companies handle whatever costs are associated with towing. And then they, like, yeah. so like, I, I know, I think that's also one of the reasons why they just take advantage because insurance companies are the ones that pay it out. Uh, so I've, I've seen obscene bills for towing, but, uh, See, but like in this situation, the insurance can't pay for it. Like then what would insurance have to do with this? You know? So it's like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right, right there, yeah. right then. This is where it's like, dude, this is, this is a scam. This is extortion, yeah. you know? Yeah. Totally. I remember when uh, we were talking to Dennis from uh, Elville a couple of weeks ago, he was saying how if his truck breaks down in Washington state, he's, he'll send a, his own towing truck from Elk Grove village to Washington state because it's yeah. cheaper than having it even towed and repaired because he, he tows it back to his warehouse uh, and his mechanic shop. And then he, he repairs it and it's a lot cheaper than leaving it in Washington. So a hundred percent, a hundred percent, because even in Washington or like in Washington or like, uh, Colorado, they'll take it or Arizona, they'll take advantage of your truck. Like if it's if you if you break down in that state, you're screwed. You know, if you can't tow your truck back, you're 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 basically screwed. I remember I had an issue with one of my trucks. I think it was in Wyoming, and they tried to charge this outrageous numbers. After I actually got my truck fixed before that, it was at a shop. And then um the guy actually worked at a Volvo and he fixed it for me. So I had my guy from Volvo from Rochester reach out to this Volvo in uh, Wyoming and it was like, dude, why are you doing this? You know, like this is my my buddy. So they yeah. like they cut the price by if I if I'm not mistaken, I think by it was like eight grand the difference, okay. you know, what they tried to charge me and what they actually ended up charging me. It was oh. like insane. Yeah. That is insane. But okay, so in good news, rates are picking up in the south. Uh, so I guess we could add some optimism into uh, the podcast because yeah, yeah. What's so going on like, in the south? Like, what, how so are your like last, trucks doing? I think, I think it's produce season. We kind of talked about it is produce. this a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's kind of helping out a little bit. And then I think like last week, why it picked up was uh, the DOT week. You know, the blitz. Yeah, yeah. So I think a lot of drivers actually sat at home and and didn't really do much, and it picked up that week. But then. I've talked to a few people and they say that June is usually one of the better months yeah. you know, for freight. So hopefully yeah, we'll see what it goes. A lot of construction and produce. I know that in California, produce picked up a little bit. Have you, have you been sending trucks to California recently or no? Uh, we do. We send like three or four a week to Cali. Okay. And then that's about it. The rest of the, the trucks just literally do like yeah. southeast. And like, so south, I feel like picked up, but the north was super dead. Like, I feel like... uh. Upstate New York and Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania was super dead. That was like dollar a mile to get out, you know. Yikes. But um, yeah, the South was like. It, what are the definitely, yeah. What are the top markets right now for drive-ins that that you've seen? So I don't really go like far like for from what we've seen where we go. Like I feel like South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina has been pretty good. This oh last yeah. Week. What's outbound yeah. out of uh, Charlotte paying right now for the, like I don't know for most runs. It depends where. So it depends sure. where you're going. So yeah, course, like if you're going to PA, you'll be going there for, I would say like you got to go there for three dollars a mile, oh, you know. Wow. And you can, yeah. you can get that right now. Yeah, you can get that, but see that's the thing you you'll get there you'll go there for three dollars a mile, but you'll be coming out for a dollar a mile, you know, yeah. because PA is so dead. So you got to like kind of figure out a good way to go there and then maybe run something shorter and then just you know kind of work work it out that way. Got it. Do like some kind of triangle, you know. Yeah, or, or some a star. Kind of star. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> okay. because if you just go basically from North Carolina to PA and then from PA back straight to Charlotte, then you're basically just going to average two dollars a mile. You know. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's what that's what we've seen. I don't, I don't really know that much more. I'm sure people that run different different markets they know different things. So, but sure. yeah, that's what I see from our side. Cool. Um, here I'm going to pull up my email newsletter. 
for today. Uh, just real quick. Uh, overall, I did the top four largest freight brokers in America. Do you know who are the top four largest freight brokers in America, Bob? Uh, Ryder. Nope. No. Top four. Okay. Let me let me guess one more. Hold on. Freight okay. brokers. Yeah, freight brokerages. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you might like a transportation. Oh, freight broker C. Robinson. Yeah, that's that's the largest one. Okay. Uh, C. Robinson, the largest four. Yeah. I know XPO was or not XPO RXO was super big, but I don't know if they're that big anymore. They're not a uh, top four right now. No. No. Uh, arrive is arrive one of them. No, I think arrives like around twelve. RXO was number eight. Oh wow. Who else then? TQL is number two. So it's uh, CH Robinson, TQL, Coyote, and then number four is Worldwide Express and Global Trans. They merged into one. Well, they merged yeah, we had, companies. I actually you know. just booked the load with them yesterday. We just booked okay. the load with them. Wow, they're number four? Yeah, they're number four because they merged because it's Worldwide Express and Global Trans. Since they merged, they count both revenues. Uh, so wow. that's why. But so CH Robinson did 15.8 billion in revenue in 2022. TQL did 8.7 billion. So basically, CH Robinson is like twice as big as TQL. Uh, and that's the first number, number two slots, first two slots. Peyote is at 5.2 billion. Uh, Global Trans Worldwide Express is at 4.9 billion. And then there's Landstar is number five at four, oh, wow. four billion. Number six is Mode Global. Seven is Echo Global Logistics, eight is RxO, nine is Uber Freight, and ten is JB Hunt. Wow, Uber Freight is up there now too, huh? Yeah, yeah, two point eight billion. Yeah. But they're still losing pretty... money though, so it's like they are. Gonna... Yeah, they're losing money still, so, unfortunately. So it's uh... yeah. Well, I'm I'm happy. I I like C.H. Robinson. I we work a lot with C.H. Robinson. I don't work with TQL. Well, they don't work with us, I should say. <laughs> DNU. Um, huh? You do not use on inner system DNU. Exactly. And then what was the yeah. third one? The third one was Coyote. Coyote? See, yeah. that's the one I'm kind of like, that's that's interesting to me because I feel like Coyote went downhill for us. You know, like I feel like we used to work with them a lot and we would book a lot of loads with them. Yeah. And now it just, it's not the same as it used to be, I feel like, a year ago or two years ago. Yeah. So. Hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, what are the smallest brokerages? Is it like some? <laughs> so there's brokers? <laughs> there's a top hundred list, and the thing is, you have to actually apply for it to get into. It. You got to send your numbers in. So, uh, um, I mean, they're all like legitimate companies. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's pretty interesting overall. That uh, is interesting. That's actually pretty cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm surprised that worldwide and global is number four. Yeah. No. Uh, but besides that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of cargo theft going on in, in the industry. 41% uh, increase in 2023. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, it's been crazy. Lots, a lot of scams going on. I wonder um, if it's like sh straight up cargo theft as in like they're stealing trailers or stuff is just missing from trailers. Um. Because I remember when we went to uh, Covenant, we were talking about, you know, that there's a huge increase in California where they're actually stealing straight up trailers, you know, and like yeah. stealing stuff. It's crazy. Yeah, dude. I don't know. Something some, something has to be done in this industry to regulate certain, certain things. I feel like there is a lot of regulation already, but I don't know. Something has to be done, especially with, with all this fraud stuff. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for tuning in to the Daily Freight Caviar podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast or if you didn't, leave a review. Let me know what you think. I appreciate any feedback. If you'd like to have more Freight Caviar content, go to FreightCaviar.com and subscribe to my email newsletter.